Welcome to Structures Unchained, where we explore the world's boldest infrastructure, from gravity-defying towers to nations built on the edge of the impossible. This week, Singapore, a city with no spare land, no margin for error, and no plans to stop growing. How does an island smaller than New York City continue expanding without expanding its borders? How do you build higher, dig deeper, and stay sustainable in a space-constrained world? These are the engineering frontiers reshaping Singapore's skyline, its subterranean networks, and the future it's building from the inside out. Beneath the surface of Singapore lies a world most people will never see. An engineered landscape where geology becomes real estate and bedrock becomes blueprint. This is the underground master plan. Not a single project, but a national framework for treating underground space like a new dimension of the city itself. With just 735 square kilometers of land and nearly 6 million residents, Singapore had to ask a radical question. What if we expanded downward? To answer it, the Urban Redevelopment Authority mapped the island's geological layers in 3D, a digital foundation for placing transportation systems, utility networks, storage vaults, and even future public spaces underground, without conflict. Some of it already exists. The Jurong Rock Caverns, 130 meters below ground, store over 1.4 million cubic meters of liquid hydrocarbons, freeing up 60 hectares above for industry. The Deep Tunnel Sewerage System, a 50-kilometer gravity-driven network, now channels wastewater to the new Tuaz Water Reclamation Plant. When Phase 2 opens in 2026, it will replace dozens of older treatment sites. And what comes next goes deeper. Air-conditioned pedestrian corridors beneath Orchard Road, an automated logistics tunnel network in Jurong Innovation District, where unmanned vehicles will carry goods below the surface, reducing truck traffic above. What makes this system possible is a breakthrough in spatial planning, the 3D cadaster. Just as air rights govern how high buildings can rise, underground rights now define where infrastructure can run, at what depth, for what function, and with what future coordination. It's not just a matter of digging. It's a choreography of elevation, function, and foresight. If density is destiny, Singapore's is being written in stone. If Singapore's underground future is hidden from view, then Marina Bay is its visible ambition. A skyline that rose not from land, but from the sea itself. Built entirely on reclaimed ground, Marina Bay is proof that Singapore doesn't wait for space, it engineers it. But what's seen above is only half the story. Beneath the promenades and towers runs the Common Services Tunnel, a 1.4-kilometer artery that carries power, water, and fiber optics to the entire district. Maintenance crews walk it daily, keeping the city's core alive without ever opening up a street. Even skyscrapers share infrastructure. A central district cooling system pumps chilled water through this tunnel, serving over 27 buildings, with more to come. Since 2006, the system has delivered uninterrupted service, reducing rooftop equipment, lowering energy consumption, and making room for parks, pools, and gardens in the sky. Marina Bay is also protected by an invisible wall, the Marina Barrage, a tidal gate that turned the bay into a freshwater reservoir and a flood control system in one. It's why the waterfront stays dry during king tides and monsoon surges. In Singapore, resilience is embedded into the landscape. Now, the skyline is climbing again. At the heart of the bay, 8 Shenton Way is under construction, a super tall tower that will rise to 305 meters by 2028, becoming the tallest building in Singapore's history. It will stack offices, residences, gardens, and public space inside a silhouette inspired by the tropical canopy, wrapped in bronze fins that act as both shading and symbol. Expect best-in-class green certifications, smart facades, sky terraces that act as vertical parks, 
But the real story isn't the height, it's the integration. At Marina Bay, infrastructure doesn't just coexist. It works as a system. From sewers to skyline, everything is connected by design, turning waste and water into power. On the western edge of Singapore, two megaprojects are converging to create something no other city on Earth has attempted, a fully integrated facility where waste, water, and energy form a closed-loop system. This is Tuas Nexus, the meeting point of two engineering giants. PUB's Tuas Water Reclamation Plant, opening in 2026, NEA's Integrated Waste Management Facility, coming online from 2027. Individually, they are massive. Together, they redefine urban utilities. Here, wastewater flows into advanced treatment tanks. Sludge from that process is combined with food waste from the incinerator next door. Inside giant digesters, this mixture produces 40% more biogas, a renewable fuel that powers the entire system. Electricity generated from incineration is used to run the water plant. The result? An energy-positive infrastructure capable of powering over 300,000 households, while treating 800,000 cubic meters of used water and incinerating 5,800 tons of waste every day. The environmental impact? Over 200,000 tons of CO2 avoided annually. The equivalent of removing 42,000 cars from the road. But the details run deeper. The Tuis Water Reclamation Plant is designed to produce high-grade NE water feedstock. Ultra-clean water for reuse. The waste management facility captures metals and minerals before ash is handled, shrinking landfill use to a fraction of historic levels. Co-location means fewer trucks, fewer emissions, smaller land take, and the entire site is sealed with enclosed handling, odor control, and automation from end to end. Even transit plays a role. The nearby Pasir Panjang bus depot, completed in 2023, is equipped for electric buses, powered in part by the same circular system. At Tuis Nexus, nothing is wasted. Not heat, not water, not land. It's not just a power plant. It's a new kind of urban metabolism, engineered to sustain the city without consuming it. In a city where land is scarce and time is currency, movement is everything. Singapore's transit network is one of the densest and most advanced on Earth. But even it must grow. And now, the focus is shifting west. Enter the Jurong Region Line, the city's first medium-capacity, fully driverless MRT system. Spanning 24 kilometers with 24 stations, the JRL will open in phases between 2027 and 2029, connecting Jurong West, Tenga, Nanyang Technological University, and the future Jurong Lake District, Singapore's next CBD. Every station is elevated. Every train is automated. The system is designed to scale, starting with three-car trains, expandable to four as demand grows. But the innovation isn't just in the automation, it's in the urban stitching. Platform screen doors for safety, noise barriers along viaducts, cycling pads and barrier-free access under the tracks, transforming the structure into a spine that connects, not divide. Major interchanges like Jurong East, Chua Chu Kang, and Boon Lay are being redesigned for fast, seamless transfers. Bus routes will be rebalanced to shorten last mile travel. By completion, the JRL will place 60,000 more households within a 10-minute walk of rapid transit and connect key educational, industrial, and commercial zones across the West. The first Hyundai Rotom trains are already undergoing testing. Viaducts now stretch across expressways and industrial estates. It's precision transit built for density, wired for growth, and engineered to make every minute count. While tunnels shape the ground and trains shape the city, one project is pushing Singapore's ambitions upward into aerospace. This is Salitar Aerospace Park, 
a 320 hectare campus that has transformed a historic airfield into a global aviation hub. Over 70 companies and 6,000 professionals now operate here, including aviation giants like Rolls-Royce, Pratt & Whitney, Airbus, Bombardier, and Embraer. In 2022, Bombardier quadrupled its service center, creating one of Asia's largest MRO hubs for business jets. Collins Aerospace broke ground on a $250 million facility set to open in 2027. Megat, PPG, and a wave of startups are testing everything from drone logistics to smart aviation coatings. But Solitar isn't just a collection of hangars. It's a self-sustaining ecosystem. Rolls-Royce runs a training academy and advanced tech center. Startups like Skyports are prototyping urban air mobility. Even the colonial-era oval at Solitar has been repurposed into a lifestyle and f and zone, turning the industrial into the livable. The result? A talent magnet, a testbed for innovation, and a strategic node in Asia's aerospace map. Singapore doesn't build for size. It builds for specialization. And in the sky economy, Solitar is quietly becoming a power player. All of Singapore's megaprojects share a single truth. Constraint breeds invention. As the underground master plan deepens, Marina Bay rises, and Tuas Nexus closes the loop. Singapore is building the kind of city where every project is a response to pressure, and every solution is engineered with precision. Subscribe for more stories from the frontier of infrastructure, design, and the future of cities.